in order to measure anything, we need to know or define the quantity to be measured and the units for measuring it. Let's take a simple experiment. You and your friends are asked to go and measure the size of your school football field. Of course, you will need to measure the length and width. And uh, then probably calculate the area. But before we begin with measuring the width and the length, we will need to agree on some common units to use. This is for uniformity purpose. Why do we need this? If we allow each one of you to start measuring on their own, there are those who are going to take their footsteps. They will start using their footsteps as a unit. Others will use rods of whichever length. Others might take miles. Others will take yards, etc. At the end, we will come up with different sizes, but the same, same football field. This is a problem that existed for so many countries. Each country had their own system, their own unit of measurement. In this video, we are going to study the international system of units, commonly abbreviated as SI units. These units are accepted nearly in all countries on the globe. My name is Fred Arapto from teacher.co.ke and let's begin. The International System of Units, abbreviated as SI, from the French word Systeme de International de Units, is the modern form of the metric system. It is the only system of measurement with an official status in nearly every country in the world. Before we dive into the seven basic units of measurement, as were agreed upon in 1960, let's look at some historical overview. The creation of the metric system following the complete destruction of the traditional imperial French unit system marks the beginning of a series of events that eventually led to the currently accepted international system of units. Before then, the great German mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss was the first to promote the idea of combining metric units to form a complete and consistent unit system for mechanics. Gauss, with the help of the German physicist known as Wilhelm Weber, Gauss, with the help of a German physicist known as Wilhelm Weber, managed to extend the concept to include the units for electricity and magnetism. Their units gave rise to the Gaussian system of units. The organization of Gaussian system of units served as a model for the international system. The 11th General Conference on Weights and Measures that took place in Paris, France in October 1960 brought together many international organizations to establish the definitions and standards of a new system and to standardize the rules for writing and presenting measurements. This conference gave birth to the International System of Units and abbreviated as SI by the International Convention. The seven basic units that were agreed upon in 1960 are as follows. Other quantities can be obtained from the multiplication or division of these basic quantities and they will be called derived quantities. Here are the seven basic quantities. They are SI units and symbols. One, length. The SI unit for length is the meter and the symbol is a small letter M. The second basic quantity is mass, whose SI unit is kilogram and symbolized as KG, small letters. Basic quantity three is time. The SI unit is second, abbreviated or written in symbol small letter S. 
Four, electric current. The SI unit is ampere. The symbol is capital A. The fifth basic quantity is thermodynamic temperature. The SI unit is Kelvin. The symbol is capital K. Number six is luminous intensity. The SI unit is candela and the symbol is capital C small d. C D. Number seven and the last one is the amount of substance. The SI unit is mole, symbolized as mole with M O L, all of them written in small letters. So those are the seven basic quantities that were agreed upon in 1960 to form the international system of units known as SI units. Before winding up on the SI units, let us define what derived quantities are. Now, derived quantities refers to those quantities that are obtained through multiplication or division of the basic quantities. An example of a derived quantity is speed. Speed is simply defined as the distance covered over time taken. So distance refers to the length, which its SI unit is meters, while time is a basic quantity whose SI unit is seconds. So if we divide distance by time, we simply get speed and the SI units of speed will be meters per second. Music